very it's beautiful we are in Hollywood we all want to be an actor a hero mm -hmm. whatever and that's what it is it's like I am the one in power and God no it's not going to be for you it's going to be for me I'm going to be the main character of, of this movie and so we can see that that the going with the story with the thought and feeding the fantasy with the thought is an addiction and we can start to look closely at what are we addicted by all those thoughts all those judgments that make up a self that doesn't exist how do we really go deeper and deeper and deeper with that yeah. and the ego had to make up a substitution for this vastness this perfect oneness that we are and so I was looking at the course a couple of weeks ago and um, and I found in a passage, I think it was in chapter 15, where Jesus was talking about the ego and how sneaky it is. And it was talking within one paragraph, I think two par paragraphs were next to each other, but about within the span of one paragraph he talked about the ego's um, weapon and the ego's gift. And he was referring to the special love relationship. He was just beginning like a whole series of like nine chapters on one topic. But he was just in that beginning of chapter 15 beginning to talk about that there has to be a substitute to make you feel that there is a way to have love in the linear story. And then of course the synchronicities would have it when we were in, in Hawaii um, one day I was sitting around the house and I, I looked around the room, the living room, and I said, Who here has not seen the great Gatsby? And all, that's to my delight, all the hands in the room went up. None of them had seen well, the movie, The Great Gatsby. Um, this, I was just seeing the remake with Leonardo. I said, Get in the car, we're going to see The Great Gatsby. Then when I come here, Patrice says, this was right. F. Scott Fitzgerald's, uh, this Last was the home where he died here. Right, at his home where he died, right here at the mantle. We're sitting, <coughs> sitting on the spot. Yes. <laughs> for you, for you it's freakier land. If we, if we rolled this back to, what is it, 1940? It's like we would see F. Scott Fitzgerald. And the thing I loved about The Great Gatsby was, was that it was truly between uh, great uh, Gatsby and, and Daisy, it was truly the special love relationship played out in all of its intricacies and brilliantly put out where, you know, Nick Carraway's like the cousin, but, but Gatsby has his giant mansion right across from where da Daisy lives with the green light. And the parties were all designed just in hope out of all those parties, those huge parties, just one party that Daisy would come to. And everything, his entire world, which was a, you know, very famous world, very vast, millions and millions of dollars, all designed to catch a fish. Uh, he, was, he was fishing and he was using everything that the world had to offer to catch that fish. And then, when he seemed to catch the fish, he wanted to keep the fish. He wanted the fish all for himself. And, and it just goes into great detail to show that that's what the ego is doing. Not only does it have a, a whir of motion picture of images, but it's got an agenda underneath because it wants to make love in form. Whereas love is divine, love is eternal, love is of God, love is pure oneness. But it's got a scheme underneath all these motion pictures. It's got a little subtle agenda and expectation, sometimes not so subtle when you're in the throes of it, but it wants it to look. And that's that filter, that's that self-concept. Instead of feeling like lonely and frightened and scared, then the ego is saying, here, I'll offer you a picture. I'll offer you a form of love that will satisfy you and that will make you content, it will make you fulfilled. And then there's enormous effort to maintain the picture. And if that picture shatters, then to 
form another one, surely, except with for Jay Gatsby, it was just one, and he ended up getting shot and laying in the pool, the bottom of the pool, because he was so obsessed with that one that it literally there was no other in his mind. He was not interested in making another attempt. It was one full attempt, which failed, as they always do, because they were attempting to deny reality. Yeah, and I've been joining with a friend um, a lot lately, and it's been beautiful because she's just really going through a deep, deep, deep undoing, and um, she's been very identified to being a woman and having relationship, and she's um, in our community, and she's joining with with a, a friend who seems to be a man, but who is gay, actually, and she's going through all those all this love pouring through her and she feels like this deep attraction which I feel like is really the spirit using actually this attraction to undo the identity that she's been so into which is just believing that she needed to have this kind of special relationship with sex sexuality or in sexual intimacy or this or all that in order to be loved in order to be worthy and that it would give her something. And I feel like right now what's happening is like the spirit is actually giving her all the love, unconditional love and support for the undoing of that, that specialness. And she, she's sharing with me, I can see how much I want to be special. And, and, she, and the rage that is coming with that, like because she's not getting what she wants, but, but she's getting what she truly wants, which is just that there is such a profound love and such a space that this other friend is holding for her to allow the healing of that, to allow the undoing of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what she truly wants, this unconditional love and acceptance. And in that, she, she keeps telling me, like, I'm disappearing here, I'm disappearing, mm -hmm. I'm disappearing. And that's true, who she thought she was in the troll, who she was identified with, is disappearing because it's not fed. And, and she can see like how when specialness is undone, how much rage there is underneath. And it's really the rage at God for God not giving me the specialness that I want. And that's, that's really what, is, what needs to be looked at. There is a tremendous rage for not getting what we think we want. And, and for all of that to be undone. And yeah, I think it is really important to allow that looking and to keep going deeper and deeper with that and seeing and realizing that again like she can see the same thing like when she allows the fantasy that maybe someday he will change his mind she's going with that and it's actually not wanting to face what's coming up in the moment whether it's deep rage or also deep unworthiness like there is a deep self-hatred that is rooted in the belief in separation that needs to be faced and needs to be looked at too. And so really allowing to come in touch with those feelings instead of going with the story of my life, the story or the fantasy that I would like it to play out instead of being in the moment is really an important part of accepting who I am, of realizing who I am. Because we cannot keep pushing it down. We cannot keep repressing it or doing as if, no, I'm done through that, I'm done. No, it's really just encouraging it to come up and to see it for what it is, it is not true. But as long as I want to hide it, or that I want to push it away, somewhere I still believe it's true and I'm just trying to defend against it by uh, really giving attention and feeding all those thoughts in the mind that create this fantasy of a life that is not even the one I'm living in. It's just I'm living in a fantasy in the dream. It's like I'm living in a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. And it needs to really be traced back to the real cause. I want to be special, which is I want to have my own will. I want to be separated and I'm choosing it over and over again. And we need to come back to the moment of decision. Really seeing that every moment I have the power to decide otherwise. I'm not powerless because nothing is happening out there.
it's all happening in the mind it's all only thoughts and then it's really important to come back to that profound yeah. that saying in the Course, when you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. And as you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in him you will find yourself or lose yourself. It's that as you see him, it still is not talking about really a perception. If you see a man, you aren't a man, or if you see a woman, you aren't a woman. It's, it's, it's just, as you perceive your brother, you shall perceive yourself. It's kind of leading us in. You know, as you, as you react, as you feel about them, you know, um, that feeling, that feeling that you have is all about yourself, because there's only one of us, really there's not two. And then as you think of him, you will think of yourself. So if you think of yourself as a body, if you have that filter that's in front of the screen, we'll say that you are a body, then you cannot help but see your brother, your sister as a body as well. They can't be spirit unless you're spirit. If you're a body, then they're a body in perception. The mind is that powerful. And then that's what the specialness is. To, to see a brother, to see a sister as a body is what the specialness is. It's like a, a concretized, solid form of, of error. It's like taking error and making it specific and saying, here it is. So really, this is why we need help. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. You know, he, Jesus says, you can see a world without help. But you, you can't really truly see a spiritual vision without help. You need the Holy Spirit's help. You know, it's like you're doing this on your own with the ego. This whole projection thing is, is like trying to do it all by yourself on your own. But if you need help to truly see another world, you need help to see the, with the vision of Christ. And we have to come to that humbleness to start really saying, I need help and I, I need help cleaning this filter, because that's the only hope I have of truly not judging, of truly not falling into the trap of judgment, is if the Holy Spirit will help me clean the filter. And, and then it's delightful. Every moment is delightful without a filter. But if there's a concept involved, then it's better to just pause and, and introspect or go in to, to just be aware of what that filter is. And really that's the purpose of our weekend, to get really clear about what those filters are. Because, you know, it will determine the world you see unless you clean those filters. Yeah, so just really opening up to all of you to really just whatever's in your mind, on your heart that you feel you want to look at or you want to go into. Yeah, just really Go for it, it's really the moment for that. It's the time that you just give yourself by coming this weekend to really go deep into it and, and release it. And we all join in that. And the celebration and the release of what has never been true. <laughs> it's so funny that um, <laughs> when you and I talk, when I'm all asked, you know, how are you doing? I, I just so happen to be um, in Hawaii with my partner and we moved to Hawaii and now I'm back in LA without my partner because my partner's in Hawaii and um, it's, it's beautiful that we started off with special relationships because it was it, it it's totally an opportunity to look at you know the moments where it's like I, I, I may miss this person or I miss this person it's like well what's that about what's really there this idea that I need you know the physical person there to feel the truth of who I am, and it's like, oh wow, I, 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 I see, oh, I can feel how I've separated myself from this other person, and certainly some of that stuff also, it's interesting from a, a behavior standpoint, in the sense that 
them, it's like the need to then fill it with other special people by looking through the phone book to say, okay, I'm, al- I'm alone, so who can I call right now? And then it's like, well, what is that for? So um, certainly, you know, to, to look at that and invite the Holy Spirit um, to show me what's really true um, in the moments that I believe or think that I'm somehow separate from love because a person or a symbol or body is not in front of me. And also really come from spirit, you know, if I'm reaching out to someone, um, it's coming from a place of really wanting to join with them at a spirit level as opposed to um, the specialness of using the person in the sense that, um, you know, I'm calling to get someone to fill what I perceive as space in my, in my, in my perceived life. So um, that's what's been coming up for me and what um, I feel like I've been certainly bring up and talk about for healing yeah that's beautiful that's that's really bringing it right to what's <laughs> the most relevant thing in your entire life you know because it's like I was thinking of the matrix you know where cypher is explaining to Neo oh, he's watching all these codes on on the screen and and Neo is saying what what is this and he said well you you know it's the construct programmers you know that can see everything all I see is this and he said, I see blondes and brunettes, but all you can see is a bunch of digital numbers. But I, I was thinking of that the other day. I thought, you know, the iPhones and the latest version of Skype. So I push on the little blue button and on comes my Skype. And I have a lot of contacts. I can scroll quite a bit. But they're all yellow, which is away, or they're green, which is they're online, or they just disappear. You may be watching and going, oh, sh-. you know, they just, they just absolutely disappear. If they're not green or yellow, they're gone. Mm-hmm. They just, whoosh, just disappear. And you can just watch. For me, it's always fun just to watch my, my little screen. Go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as they, they morph and they move and they come, you know. And that's kind of the way it is in life. You know, you have someone we call a partner and then then they're in Hawaii, and then they're they're away. Mike is yellow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's so funny is that weekend when I was home, I decided it was it was best for me to just be alone the, at the weekend. Um, I turn on the TV and I watch The Matrix. <laughs> yeah, those reminders just so come out as really strong. Yeah. Yeah, and what came was that yeah having studied acting and done acting at it, it came, it's really no different than that. To take on this character as real under given any given circumstances mm-hmm. is the, 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 the actor to really believe this role. And I, uh, I was like, it, that's no different than what the mind has done, believed this character, these concepts that seem to about preferences and judgments and interpretations and these all these different constructs that now become this in mind this character called Patrice but it's just a character a caricature really just a caricature and it was re- it's just really clear that's not me that's not the truth of who I am that's just really clearly constructs no different than the characters in a, in a movie, mm-hmm. in The Great Gatsby, or in The Matrix, like absolutely no different, but in the mind there's been a belief that it is different, that that is the one that's real, that the one that's called Patrice is real, but, but there isn't a difference, it's just absolutely just as illusory as all the characters on seemingly celluloid. Now I thought we're in Hollywood, yeah. So it's just really. Yeah, it does remind me of that um, Al Pacino movie, Simone, yeah. where it's literally a, a generated computer image that's literally constructed of a woman, and the, he calls her a vector, a virtual actor, a vector. Yeah. And literally, it's Fiction, it's make believe, but then he he invents her with all this technology, and then he starts putting her into movies because 
his actress is, you know, doesn't want to play the part, so he just puts his back to in and then she becomes <coughs> famous, world famous, does concerts and has fan clubs in the millions and it's just showing, I think it's one of the best movies I've ever seen of just showing how the construct, you can tack on and add fame and all kinds of things. She does talk shows, he just, he can speak for her, he can go on talk shows and, and just use the construct and then it just gets, spins out of control, but that is an amazing kind of a depiction of what you're talking about and then now that you've come from theater and acting, now it's down to Patrice and now you're here this weekend to try to finally dissolve Patrice for once and for all. The, the most important actor, actress in the world exactly. is the one that, that you believe is you, exactly. that you have to feed it and clothe it and do all these things to pamper it and protect it psychologically with all kinds of defense mechanisms so it doesn't shake, you know, and crumble. And then finally you end up, you know, coming to a, a weekend to find the end of me. Yeah. <laughs> and so beautiful to really just know that that's, like, that's all I want in my heart. To really know that one character that I believe to be so real, the one, the only one that seems to be real in the mind, to just really come to that, oh, she's just as illusory as all the characters I've played in the past. <laughs> all the characters on paper, all the characters on stage, you know, and yeah, she's no more real than they were. How practical that is, because I know since I've interacted with you, that's what we've looked at. We've looked at every aspect of the life of Patrice that that seems heavy. Yeah. And and you could and they're all like overlays, like in the old days when we were in high school we had overhead projectors where we just the teacher would turn on the projector yeah. and it would just blast this beautiful white light on the wall. Mm -hmm. Then the, yeah. the teacher would take out their little folder and packet of overlays <laughs> yeah. and either they'd put a lot of them on, which a lot of the teachers like to lay on a lot of overlays, you know, <laughs> guessing which ones, or they get the marker out yeah. and they'd get the marker going all over the overlays and then the wall was just covered with shadows. And really that's what you've been doing where you take a one concept like Patrice or, or something like Debt yeah. Something that seems heavy, yeah. heavy on Patrice. Yeah. It's like a heavy armor, and yeah. and you want, and then you start to take a look at that. And isn't it great that this inward looking yeah. is the way that you're truly free of it, not by doing an action in form, like even working a job or all the things that the world would say. Well, yeah. you have to do this and this if you're going to deal with that, but to see that you can do it in a mental way, in a momentary mental way, yeah. which is really what we're talking about. That's the only way to do it too. It's not going to yeah. happen in a partial mental way. It has to be a moment yes. of total mind to really be free of that weight, that heaviness, the shame, the guilt. Yeah. 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 I like that about um, quantum physics because it's, it's taking it away from the old looking at the world through kind of an empirical filter of in your time to, to seeing that whatever you perceive is exactly what you've chosen. It's the power of decision. It's totally a choice. It, it has nothing to do, there's nothing happening to. It's, it's just a choice. It's a choice of interpretation. And then really practicing A Course in Miracles is, is practicing a miraculous Holy Spirit inspired interpretation. Just like you would exercise, you know, and you first start exercising, when you exercise your practice of a miraculous Holy Spirit interpretation, and you and you practice it and practice it, and it's, oh, it's feeling more natural. Oh, you, oh, this is feeling really easy, and you're drawn by the ease, by the gentleness, by the naturalness, by the natural feeling of that high interpretation. But at first, it's very foreign, you know, when you first start to open up to it. You know, it seems more like, oh, it sounds sentimentally good. It sounds like I would like to have that, but then you actually practice it and like with meditation, the more you give yourself over to it, the more natural it feels and the more 
you're drawn into it, and then after a while you don't want to do anything else. <laughs> you know, <laughs> knock at the door. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, you know, you just <laughs> have such a good time. <laughs> you don't want to answer the door. <laughs> you're drawn in, yeah.